What is up everybody, Tech Chucker here, and today I've got a review for you of the DC Collectibles GameStop exclusive Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Batman and Leonardo 2-pack. Now, if you don't recall, when we first saw these pictures out, I was not a huge fan. I thought they looked kind of dumb, but now that I've got them in hand, I am so excited. And again, I need to make sure that I give thanks to Mr. James Dew at Dew Dog Reviews for the heads up on the 25% off GameStop deal. I was able to get these, both of them, for 25% off. So awesome, awesome, thank you so much. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and crack these things open and take a closer look. All right, here they are out of the packaging. And I gotta say, they are looking really good. These things, looks so nice. I am really impressed with the work that DC Collectibles has done on these figures. So let's go ahead and get started with the Leonardo figure first, and let's just bring this in a little bit closer. All right, taking a look at this figure, I am really happy with the sculpt on this thing. He looks so good. He looks very, very much like the way he looked in the movie. Loving this bandana, though the one issue that I have is it is not articulated, so you're not really gonna be able to move it around. It is somewhat flexible, but it's not really poseable so much. But, you know, it's okay still. I love the panel lining that they've got here on the chest, on the shell here, that looks great. And I really like the fact that if we pull this off, the fact that the belt sash essentially is making an L for Leonardo, that's cool. I don't remember if that's the way that it was in the movie, but I don't care, it still looks really cool. I love the way that all of this looks. The tone of green that they've got for Leonardo is awesome. If you didn't already, check out my Raph and Robin two set or two pack review. He has a very much different green. It's more of an olive. This is much more green green and it's looking really good. And then let's take a look at his shell. This also is looking really nice. There's a few scuffs on here and that's because of the kind of flat color that, um, that they've got going on with this figure uh, with the kind of the paint and the uh, the sheen, but it's still, it's really not that noticeable, but you do see a little bit of a mark there. I really like these elbow pads. They've painted them really nicely. There's a little black accent and those little, uh, I don't know, I guess it's like rope that would be tying these pieces together. Those are actually sculpted on there and it's painted really cleanly. So I'm super happy with that. I think they did a great job and they did it again also on the knee pads and those are looking really, really sharp as well. Uh, the feet are huge and I really am digging that because that gives him a really good stable base to be able to be standing on and I really like the way that these hands are sculpted as well. They're kind of blocky looking, but it still looks really, really good. So very, very pleased with the way that this Leonardo turned out. Next up is of course the Batman figure. And again, I think DC Collectibles really nailed this likeness. They did a great job. The grays are looking so nice. The bat symbol looks amazing on his chest. It is so cleanly done. And then his face is looking really, really good. I love the way that they've got that with the really, really blocky uh, chin. That looks great. It all is proportioned really, really well. These, whatever these uh, spikes are on the wrists are looking good or on the, yeah, we'll just call it wrists, looking awesome. And then the utility belt, uh, these lines are all sculpted in and then panel lined as well. And then you've got panel lining on his abs here, his biceps up there and throughout on the legs. That is looking great. You've got a little bit of that panel lining again on his back. Also looking great. They painted the back of the belt, which looks awesome. And again, everything looks as though it is painted. And so it's really looking 
Very, very impressive. I love it. Then if we throw in the cape on him, and he is really looking super impressive. I love the way that this turned out. And what's even better is it is the same material that they did with the Batman as Mikey. So it's great because you can see the it's the exact same cape. It is so good. They did a great job. The one and only difference that I'm noticing, nope, not even a difference. I thought that there wasn't the lines uh, sewed in, but even Batman has the lines. So it is the same cape for both of them, which is great. It gives that continuity and it's, yeah, this is awesome. I love it. They did a great job with both the paint and the sculpt on these figures and I'm just, I couldn't be happier. All right, let's go ahead and check out to see just how tall these two are. And Leonardo is coming in at about five and a half inches tall, not super huge. And then Batman is coming in from the tip of his uh, cowl, the ears. He's just about six and three quarters, maybe a hair over. If you're just going to the top of his head, he's just a little over six and a half inches tall. So a really nice size difference between the two. We'll go ahead and throw in Mikey as Batman. And you can see Mikey is even shorter than our Leo and definitely shorter than Batman. And then we've got a Marvel Legends Deadpool in there. And Batman is a little bit taller than your Deadpool, but that's kind of to be expected. And then last but not least, we will throw in the other turtle from the set. And let's make some room. And we've got Raphael here, and for good measure, we will also go ahead and throw in Robin right in front of Batman. So there are your size comparisons of all of these figures, and I think DC Collectibles, again, they really nailed the sculpt. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation. We'll look at Leonardo's articulation first. And again, this is the one major issue that we have is the head is on a ball peg of some sort and he cannot look up at all. He can look down a little bit. That's actually not too shabby, but not being able to look up at all is kind of a bummer. He does look side to side. There's really nothing getting in the way of that. And then there is a little bit of tilt, not a whole heck of a lot. Moving down into the shoulders, he's got a ball hinge in the shoulders and he's able to get his arm just about 90 degrees out, which is nice. He does have full rotation of that shoulder, which is good. There is a uh, bicep swivel right at the top of the elbow. That works pretty good. And then there is a single elbow joint and that pretty close gets you to about 90 degrees, which isn't too bad. There is a ball hinge in the wrists and you gotta just kind of finagle that a little bit to get it to curl in and curl up, but it does do a pretty good job there. There is actually a joint in the torso, but what it actually does, I'm not really all that certain. You can kind of twist a little bit, but that's, you're not really gonna get much of anything out of that. Moving down into the hips, he's got T-jointed ball joints in the hips and it is a really, really good range of motion. The problem is, is they do get loose. So be aware of that. You'll probably wanna get some of that floor shine stuff. There is an upper thigh swivel because of that ball joint right at the base of the hips. That works okay, it's not too shabby. So he can kick forward only about that much. It's not great, but you know, it'll do. And then he's able to kick back about that far. And that's actually pretty good. He has double jointed knees. Those work pretty darn good, but just be careful that you don't force it and wind up breaking your figure. So heat those up if you feel that yours are a little bit stuck. That one's pretty good. And there is no shin swivel or anything like that, but down in the ankle, he's able to get his foot back that far, which is awesome. Not really all that great of a range of motion going forward though, which that is a big disappointment. But there is really, really good ankle rocker and we'll show you just how good that is. We've done this with all of them. DC Collectibles did a really, really good job with feet flat on the floor, if you can see that. Oh, almost flat on the floor. That is really good. 
I'm super happy with that. So overall, the articulation on this guy is really, really good, except for that neck articulation. And Batman's articulation isn't too bad either. He actually has some of the best uh, head articulation of all of the ones that I've gotten thus far, far that have come out, but that unfortunately is not saying all that much. So his head is able to look up only that much, which is essentially nothing. He's able to get his chin down about that far, not too bad. And then he is able to look side to side and there is a little bit, actually this is a decent amount of tilt. So I'm really happy with the tilt on that. Uh, moving into the shoulders, he's got ball hinges in his shoulders and just shy of 90 degrees. He is able to swivel that arm or that shoulder, but just be careful. This one's a little tight, so I don't want to go all the way and scratch anything, but it is working pretty good. There is no upper bicep swivel, but there is a swivel at the base of the elbow, which works pretty good. There is a single joint, which is disappointing on that elbow. And then unfortunately on this one, it is a ball hinge on here and mine is broken. Let's see if I can show you what piece is actually broken. What is broken here is this little plastic piece and you're probably not able to see that, but that is really disappointing. So I'm gonna have to see if I can get that replaced. We'll see how DC Collectibles does with their customer support. If there isn't another one that I can replace at the store, but we'll use this side to show you. Um, you know, you should be familiar by now with a standard ball hinge. Uh, you just have to kind of twist it to get it to do you know, to uh, bend where you want it to. Range of motion isn't amazing, but you know, it gets the job done for the most part. Down in the torso, he's got a ball peg, pretty limited. You're not really gonna get a whole heck of a lot of range of motion out of this, but you know, it essentially gets the job done if you kind of push it, but he can crunch forward only about that far. He can arch his back, about that much, not too shabby. And then he is able to crunch, not at all to the sides. Um, again, and actually this is a double ball peg, same issue as with Robin. So just be careful as you're moving that around. Can't really crunch that much side to side unless you're gonna pop that off. But yeah, if you kind of get it situated like that, you can actually get them to move quite a bit. Just be aware that that's gonna pop off and start getting loose on you, but it does swivel there. And then there is also a waist swivel and a little bit of play in there also. Moving down into the hips, there is T-jointed ball joints in the hips, and he's got a pretty decent range of motion there. We'll see if he can do feet flat on the floor, kind of, but not, not great. He kind of can, but not really all that great since his feet aren't really flat on the floor. But he is able to kick only that far because his little pants are kind of getting in the way of that. He is able to kick back that far, which is actually pretty darn good. There is an upper thigh swivel that works pretty good. And then double jointed knees, those also are getting you pretty much all the way in half, which is awesome. There is no upper shin swivel and it's kind of a weird ankle. It's a ball peg and it's like a double ball peg. So he can get his foot that far back, which is pretty good. Can't really get it forward much at all. And then if you work on it, you can definitely get a good ankle rocker, but that ball peg goes in at a weird angle. It kind of goes in at like a 45 degree angle into the foot. So you kind of have to work at that to get it to um, do what you're looking for. And then last, the um, cape, it's, there's, no, there's no wire or anything in there. A wire would have been cool, but beyond that, I am really happy with the articulation on this figure. And as far as accessories go, both of them come with a pretty decent number. Batman comes with a set of, uh, what do we got? We've got three additional sets of hands and then another set of hands that come on the figure. So what we've got are these two um, kind of gripping open hands. I believe those are for, he can use his grapnel gun just like that. That works pretty darn good. Uh, obviously he comes with a grapnel gun. It's 
got nice sculpt work on here and it looks really good. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. He has these two a little bit more closed hands. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they're specifically going to be holding. Maybe the Batarang, that'll work. And maybe some other stuff as well. And then he has these two hands, which are opened up like this between the fingers. And I think that is to hold um, probably Raphael's sigh. That would probably work there. Let's take a look and see if that will work. Here is Raph's one of his sighs. See if this will go in there. I could be completely wrong on this. Yep. I am completely wrong. Let's see, does it work with the Batarang? Might be for the Batarang. Interesting, okay. Moving on, he comes with this Batarang, <laughs> which we were just showing you. It looks very, very nice, nicely sculpted, nice paint. Not a huge amount on here, but it looks very good and it's very clean. Uh, it does not, it doesn't fold up or anything, but that is okay. Uh, obviously he comes with a pizza slice. Uh, if you've watched the movie, Pizza is very important. Obviously, if you know anything about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know that pizza is important, but there's an end scene that's kind of fun with pizza. Um, the grapnel gun here comes with two hook deals, one that's kind of closed, and then another one that is a little bit more open. Let's go ahead and see. This should slide in a little bit, so that will slide in the barrel, um, both of them but just be careful because they are very, very small and delicate. Uh, there's no paint on them, but they do look very, very nice. So awesome there. And then I did look this up. It's actually on the back of the packaging. It tells you what this is, and it is a bat bomb. And it's really nicely painted. The bat looks great with the orange. And then right here is what I believe to be is the red detonator button. So. This looks really cool. So overall, Batman comes with a pretty good number of accessories. An alternate head would have been really, really nice had they given us that. And then Leonardo, he doesn't come with a massive number of accessories, but he does come with some fairly nice ones. And we'll start with the alternate hands. He comes with a set of um, karate chop hands. They're sculpted really, really nicely. You can see the little wrinkles that they've got in the knuckles there, which looks really, really good. Um, there's not really much for any paint on these. It would have been nice if at least the fingernails would have been painted. For that cartoon look, you wouldn't want a whole heck of a lot of shading. Maybe a panel line somewhere would have looked good, but um, that's okay. And then he has these two uh, weapon holding hands, and then he has his two fist hands that come with uh, on the figure. And then next he comes with a slice of pizza, of course, and that's sculpted nicely, painted nicely. Nothing, nothing too spectacular there. And then he comes with his two swords, and these are really, really nice. Uh, if you can see, the handles actually have blue diamonds uh, in the actual handle, the hilt or whatever that's called. Maybe this is the hilt, I don't remember. And then this is painted yellow right here. It's a nice square look, looks good. And then the yellow on the butt of that is also looking really good. These don't pop off, so to be able to slide these into the hands, let's see how hard that is going to be. It's not too bad, but once you get it in, it's, you know, it's not tight. It's not a tight fit. So just be aware of that. You might need to put some ticky tack or something on this to um, get him to hold it a little bit more rigidly. Rigidly? Not sure if that's the right word. But the actual blade has a little bit of a groove uh, sculpted in right here, which looks really, really nice. I really like the metal uh, or the uh, gray color that they used. They are fairly bendy, so I don't think you're going to break them. Uh, they are, let's just make sure if they are exactly the same length. Yeah, essentially they are exactly the same length. So it's the same sword, they are interchangeable. And then he comes with the scabbard, which is also sculpted really nicely. You've got the wrappings of the blue going all the way around. Uh, no paint 
apps beyond just the blue, but it still looks really nice. The yellow is getting a little bit thin and a little bit messy around the top edges and around the bottom. There's definitely some feathering down here, but still looks really, really nice. And then these, there's only one way that these can go in, and that's because the blade is actually narrower on the cutting edge as opposed to the broad edge, which is a really cool detail. And so they can only go in one way. If you try and do it the other way, it's not gonna work. Also because there's a little bit of a curve, that also is gonna prevent it from going in any further. But that is really cool. I really like that. Uh, it just adds to this overall look. And there is a peg on here and we'll show you where he actually holds it because it is different than what you would normally think. Normally, we would be expecting that Leonardo would have his scabbards on his back somewhere, but not on this particular figure. On this one, there is a small hole. We'll see if you can see that on camera. There's a small hole on the side of his belt, and that is what this peg pegs into. And we will pop that in there for you. To see, I'm a little bit concerned that over time, because the belt is kind of bendy, that over time that is going to stop pegging in and staying in quite so nicely. But then, once you've got that in, just slide your swords in, and there we go. He's got his sword storage right on his hip, and I believe that is accurate to the movie. So, just so you're aware, uh, because it took me a little bit, I was looking on his back, and I'm like, where in the world is that supposed to be? Nope, it's on his side. Alrighty, there you have it, folks. The DC Collectibles Batman and Leonardo from the Batman vs. TMNT movie. Really, really cool set. I'm really digging it. I can't wait for the rest of the sets to come out. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of this set? What do you think of all of these sets that are coming out? Are they must-haves? Are they passes? Love to see that in the comments. Make sure you hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you next time.